So I just wanted to make, um, you know, another small video. Not a live commentary this time, but more like just a general, you know, how I play Team Fortress 2 type video. Over the many, many years that I've been playing the game, I've gone through lots of mods and styles and sensitivities and things like that. Uh, and, um, you know, <laughs> this video started out as just a general mod highlight but it's kind of evolved into something more and you know I really like doing these weekend projects you know every now and again so uh, it just kind of helps me unwind and relax and feel like I'm getting something done and shake off the rust so to speak because I don't really do a whole lot of editing anymore it's mostly writing and gameplay gathering and notes and things like that so editing has kind of fallen to the wayside for me in the past few you know months or weeks or whatever so I like just making these and getting it out of the way so this video is just going to be highlighting some of the things that I've got going on and some of what um, you know I've set up scripts you know cuz TF2 is very very customizable you can set scripts that'll execute only when you're playing certain classes so certain classes can have certain binds to them that you don't have universally it's very very complex and it's very very useful to learn it and you know really make the game work for you and not the other way around so without further ado let's just get into the mods first I suppose So to start with, the mod that's most apparent is Improved Crosshairs by Mr. Mister. I really like this because it gives you a lot of different options for newer crosshairs and things for your different weapons that really do add a lot of utility and that includes things like, you know, melee range lines, you know, so that way you know when you're in range and you'll actually hit an enemy with your melee weapon or maybe even just having spread patterns for things like the panic attack and that's really really useful because you know the panic attack has a fixed spread so knowing exactly where your bullets are going to hit it's really useful and it scales really well then there's things like the scottish resistance that you know has an effective range where you'll you know move your crosshair and sort of activate the bombs you know as you can see they light up and glow and that lets you know that you can you know detonate them from anywhere on the map and that kind of stuff is really really useful to me this is an incredible mod and I would recommend you pick it up and there's a lot of different variations of customizations that you can use with this that I would recommend looking into so longtime viewers of the channel might know the ever iconic um slightly modified z sud that i used for many many years and i like z sud i like the aesthetic that it tries to go for and i like you know the the style the overall persona thing i mean i've never been a huge persona person but uh, i really liked the way that the hud looked um unfortunately <laughs> over time uh, the creator has said some not so uh, savory things, um, made some changes that I wasn't too terribly keen of with the HUD, and it was starting to get outdated, and it just, it just didn't have the same appeal to me, you know, because Z's HUD, in the footage that I'm showing here anyway, it was kind of simple, but it had the style, right? New Z's HUD, very, very different. So, over the last couple of months, I would say, I've actually transitioned to using the middleman, and the middleman is basically TF2's stock HUD, but it's pushed more toward the center of the screen rather than having everything relegated to the corners. And uh, playing on an ultra wide, also, uh, it has a lot of ultra wide features that you can take advantage of, and you know, if you ever really, really want to. I don't have any clips of that because I don't play an ultra wide, you know, too much visual stimulation, but if it's an option that you want to go for, you could use it. So, as far as the HUD goes, switching it up every now and again, it can really do you a lot of good. The next mod that I want to talk about is another uh, recent addition by Skeleton Hotel, you know, using some other assets by other people in the community, and that is what's left of you. It is a blood decal mod, you know, so that 
when you shoot things, they, you know, spit out more blood, leave behind more blood decals. Um, I'm not sure if this works on Valve servers. I'm like 90% confident that it should. Anyway, I really like the mod for what it does, and it really adds a sort of visual feedback that really helps you to know whether or not you're actually landing your shots. I mean, just taking a look at the gameplay here, you can see that way more frequently, you know, character models are being plastered with blood. It's getting, you know, dripping on the walls and on the floor, and, you know, maybe that's not everybody's cup of tea. But the mod does offer some yellow variants if, you know, maybe you're squeamish or you don't like looking at blood. So, overall, I would recommend the mod. There's another set of mods that I want to talk about by Skeleton Hotel that kind of alter the way the game looks. So things like altered projectile trails will make you know you know your grenades and your huntsman arrows and stuff have different trails behind them. Altered bullet impacts will leave more detailed and uh, just generally more bullet impact holes on the walls and altered explosions and building effects. They'll you know of course alter explosions and building effects so things like sappers and sentries they provide this like level of detail that it feels like have has always been in team fortress 2 and i know for a fact that they haven't but it just allows so much i guess livelihood in the game is the best way i could describe it i mean i just just looking at some of these trails and things just following them through the air and you know it also helps visual stimulation i suppose it helps you know what you're looking at and you know what's coming and sometimes in the mess of team fortress 2 you don't really always understand what's coming at you or see it or register that it's coming so things like syringes of course you hardly going to notice them flying through the air so it's just a mod that it's a set of mods, really, that I would really, really recommend. Another mod that, uh, well, another set of mods, rather, that I frequently, occasionally get asked about on stream is my, you know, animation mods. These are just inspect animations playing in the background, uh, but I use sets from two different people, um, Kylo and Pasis on Game Banana. If you go to their respective Game Bananas or their websites or just look up uh, first person animation mods, you can find a whole plethora of them. They're the most prominent in the community, but there are probably a lot more. Uh, they just add a little bit more life than, you know, the game typically has. I mean, because it's, what, a 16 year old game, the animations, you know, I've seen them a million times. And sometimes just that much is just. A whole lot. It does a whole lot for making the game feel more fresh and up-to-date, I suppose. And if you do some little trickeries with your auto-exec file and your config, you can even make them work on Valve servers, you know, even if they're really not supposed to anymore. Which, a while back, Valve did make it official that you were able to use them, and then they went back on it because some people found out how to, you know, get away with hacking and things like that. And you know, that's neither here nor there. Animation mods are, you know, they're not typically that hard to install. You just drag and drop the VPK file and bada boom, bada bing, you're working with it. Uh, and of course, this isn't the whole arsenal of weapons that's available for each class. Um, but, you know, they're just the loadouts I had equipped at the time. So, to give a little bit of a rundown, uh, this is what I have for each individual user. For Kylo, I'm using their Scout, Spy, and Sniper animation packs, and for Pacis, I'm using Engineer, Soldier, Medic, Heavy, and Demo Man. I really don't play a lot of Pyro, and uh, at the time when I started doing the animations, uh, you know, overhauls and things like that, Pyro didn't have one up. At least, not one that I could find. And so I've just never thought it was prominent, or poignant, rather, to go and find one for him. Because, like I said, I'm not a huge Pyro fan. I see no reason to go and download it. But if you're looking for a way to just make the game, you know, visually stand out, 
all of these mods, the, you know, altered projectiles and explosions, the animations, just even just playing with a controller, I mean, it, it can really help elevate the game into a new status and really give you something like an experience that you've never had before. And a lot of it does work on Valve servers, I can attest to. Some of it doesn't, some of it does, but, you know, that's up to you to go through and do the testing on. Something that you might have noticed in the background here as the gameplay rolls is that I'm using a controller. Uh, this is not something that I normally do. You know, I've got the good old custom modified Corsair keyboard here, the, the scimitar mouse with all the buttons. I mean, I'm a PC gamer through and through. I love keyboard and mouse. That's how I'll probably always play Team Fortress 2 primarily. But one of the things I've been doing in preparation for the Overwatch video is learning to play the g both games with mouse, keyboard, and controller. Overwatch is designed in such a way that makes using a controller much easier. Team Fortress 2, out of the box, uh, it really can only read 360 controllers natively, and so you have to do a lot of fiddling about in Steam Input, for instance, and that is something that I've been doing quite a bit. Um, I'm using this config here, but uh, I've modified it greatly in order to make it work the way that I want it to. So things like push to talk, I'm not really going to be using if I'm playing with a controller. Uh, I've modified it to do a crouch jump and allow me to duck and uh, make, you know, just swapping weapons easier. It's a whole lot of fun. It's worth a try. The main controller that I've been using to do this, I should say, is my good old trusty sidekick. My mouse, no, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm talking about the Steam controller, not Edwin this time, but the Steam controller is a controller that holds a lot of, uh, it holds a soft spot in my heart. Uh, it's Valve's, one of Valve's first forays into hardware manufacturing and production, and it just overall, it's, it's a wonderful piece of kit. It's got a lot of potential, a lot of customizability, and I love it for it. <laughs> it's honestly great. If you don't have one and you can find one at a reasonable price, I'd say pick it up, give it a shot. A lot of PC games on Steam could really use it. And uh, as you can see in the background, I'm not too terribly shabby with it. Um, I've used it on stream before as a little funny gag, a little test. And the program that I'm using to overlay it is called 3D Controller Overlay. The Steam Controller model is not officially supported by the developer at this time. Uh, this is a custom model that I made using someone else's model and I cobbled it together to work for a 3D controller overlay. It's a whole lot of fun and really that previous thing statement is the reason why I haven't, you know, shared the model before because I didn't really make the model and I cannot for the life of me remember who did so I can't get permission. But it's worth a look into it if you know even just a little bit about Blender and you can find a suitable model. It's really not hard to do. So overall, if you really want to just try to play Team Fortress 2 in a new manner, in a new light, give it a shot, see how it goes. But for me personally, mouse and keyboard will probably always be my bread and butter. So to just kind of cap it off. Um, I'm not really going to go into a whole lot of detail about this, but it's something that I would recommend learning. Um, Team Fortress 2 relies on config files, and you've probably got one installed in this modern era. Well, hopefully that 64-bit branch is going to fix a lot of those issues that necessitate configs, but configs are useful for a lot of different things, and that includes um, individually you know, making certain classes have different abilities and different binds. Um, there's a lot more to it than it sounds like, but for the most part, you know, um, scripting, don't be afraid of the term script kitty, that's mostly generally for cheaters and things like that. So, you know, you could make your sensitivity smaller when you're zoomed in with Sniper. Or you could have that quick switch bind that the uh, that Uncle Dane promotes a lot of times in his videos, 
or you could even have a script that allows for the spy to automatically switch weapons when disguised, which, if you didn't know, that is a thing you can do. So, there's a lot of different things you can do, and each class would have different, you know, um, capabilities, and some of them you really don't need it. Uh, medic, you could probably just bind your vaccinator resistances to different keys rather than having to cycle them, as I know a couple people do. Or maybe even, if you're like me, have a script to make rocket jumping a little bit easier since, you know, carpal tunnel <laughs> and all that. Uh, but it's just one of those things that I would recommend looking into. So I hope that uh, all the information here, the different mods and scripts and settings and things that I use, I mean, I hope a lot of that can help you tr maybe experience TF2 in a different light. Um, now, not everybody is going to be a fan of this. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but... It's something that I would at least look into and experiment with because a lot of it's very interesting and if you like even, you know, coding, you know, it's not a whole very in-depth coding system like Python or Java, but scripting can provide sort of that, you know, thrill of troubleshooting and figuring out how different things work together and playing with a controller you know, with gyro aim and buttons and keybinds and steam input is a very, very, um, I'm gonna say in-depth system to learn. <laughs> so a lot of this has just helped me, you know, in the last few months kind of reinvigorate how I play Team Fortress 2, how Team Fortress 2 could be modernized by even just its community, because there's been a lot of talk of that over the last couple of years. This is something that I feel like everybody should experiment with, even just a little bit. I've always enjoyed modding games and making them work a little differently than how they're supposed to, because, you know, so, games like Fallout and Skyrim and Quake, you know, they're very, very good, but they could always be better. And if you've got the skill set and you've got the tenacity, and the mind or you know whatever you need to get this done anybody can do it it doesn't matter if you're naturally talented or if you have to learn it so go out there make some mods install some mods or just write a few lines of rudimentary source engine code i suppose so with all of that out of the way thank you for watching and i still promise the overwatch video is coming i'll talk to you later